Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to be talking about triage. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. So today for triage, we're going to be specifically be focusing on the emergency room triage. What happens when a patient comes into the emergency room and how does that triage nurse go through and decide what's going to be going on with that patient and what kind of resources are we going to be using for that patient. So for triage, the word actually means to sort, right? And what we're going to be looking at here is what happens when they come through the door. So when the patient comes in, the first big question as an emergency room nurse, you're going to look at them, you're going to say, is this patient dying? Um, if they are dying, then we are going to be giving them a, an acuity of one. And we're going to get into what all these numbers mean. But if the patient's dying, that means we're going to be looking at things like cardiac arrest, respiratory arrest, or something else that is going on where the patient is actively dying, right? If the patient is not dying, the next question you're immediately going to think to yourself is, can the patient wait? So is this somebody that's going to wait for a room or to get back? Or is it somebody that has to be seen relatively quick within the next maybe 10 minutes? And those are things we're going to be looking at as like a chest pain, someone who's having some type of stroke-like symptoms, or anything else that would think you would think along the lines like anaphylaxis, like, uh-oh, they probably need something really quickly. We're going to give them an acuity of a two, okay? And then we're going to go on to a third question. So if they pass, is the patient dying? No. Can the patient wait? Yeah, they could probably wait. We're going to go into how many resources are they going to need. And if they need basically no resources from us, so somebody who might need like a medication refill, then they're going to be a five. If they need maybe one resource, like they might need some type of medication that is not oral, we would put them as a four. Or there's somebody that's going to need something like IV fluids and maybe an image to see what's going on they're going to be a three. But if you get to somebody who's like, mm, there are three, they're going to need a lot of resources from us, but they also have some concerning vital signs, I'm going to bump them up to a two so they can get back. What does all this mean? What are these numbers? You're giving people two, you're giving people four, you're giving people five. What do all those numbers mean? Those numbers are based on this tool that we use as a triage nurse in the emergency room, and it's called the ESI. And ESI stands for the Emergency Severity Index. So the Emergency Severity Index is a tool that we use in order to assign an acuity, which is acuity, is a number from one to five. One being the most acute, meaning they should be seen really quickly, and five meaning the least acute or someone who's possibly gonna be able to wait because they're very stable. So if you understand what the Emergency Severity Index means or that number, then this pathway right here makes a lot of sense. Think about it again. Is the patient dying? Are we currently doing CPR? Are we currently trying to save their airway and put a tube down their throat? Then this patient is more than likely needs everything we've got right now. But is there somebody who's coming in who has maybe some type of abdominal pain and we're going to think, hmm, they might need images, they might need some antibiotics, so they're going to be needing medication, they might need some fluids from us, then we're going to be using maybe more than to resources, so we're gonna give them an acuity of three. And we're gonna go through an entire chart over here in a minute, and it'll help clear this up for you. But I want you to understand that when we do that across the room triage, along with a focused triage and trying to figure out what we're gonna be assigning this patient, we're gonna be doing the basic assessment that you would do in maybe some type of prioritization question on the NCLEX, is we're gonna go through their ABCs, right, their airway, breathing, and circulation, then we're going to go into, do they need any life-saving interventions? And then we're going to think to ourselves, what are their number of resources? Because if ABCs are compromised, they're already going to be getting an acuity of one. If they need a life-saving intervention, they're probably going to be an acuity of two and or one. And then if they do need a lot of resources. So depending how this pathway works in your brain, which one you like better, the ABCs, the life-saving intervention, and then the number of resources is kind of how we get into that acuity and that ESI number for our patient. So let's go in and talk about what are the types of resources that our patient would need and then go through the chart and fill it out to, so we can understand how this acuity level works. Now when you start thinking about the resources a patient's going to need, you're going to be like, Kristen, what are you talking about? What are these different resources? How does this work? So you want us to think back to when a patient comes in, they're usually coming to the ER for something that they can't necessarily do on their own or possibly can't get done at their family doctor. So resources that when they come into the ER, what are they gonna get done? What are some things, think in your head, like what do we typically do for patient care? The first thing is gonna be labs, right? We get some labs, and you can think of this as blood work, 
And something else that we usually test is urine. And then you can also think of cerebral spinal fluid, et cetera, et cetera. So one resource is gonna be labs. The next resource is gonna be what? Something else that they usually can't get done is images, right? So we're gonna think of things like x-ray, CAT scan, MRI, or ultrasound. So one resource is labs, blood work, urine. I usually just think liquids. If we have to take any liquids from them to get tested. Images, so any type of picture we're gonna take of the patient. What else is something we typically do for a patient that possibly comes into the ER? We can give them IV fluids. So we're thinking all of our crystalloids that we could be giving them. And there's another thing we usually give our patients is medications. Now the one thing about the severity index or the ESI is that they do not include oral medications in a resource. They do not consider that. So we need to think what are other types of routes of medications that we can give. So you want to think IM, intramuscular shot, IV, intravenous, and what's another type that we can give them? Got it in your head, sub Q, good, all right? So these are some medications that we can be given to our patients. Because of all of this, we have labs, we have images, IV fluids, and medications. These are things that we can help with our patient that we can do as nurses. But then there's also resources they may need that are out of our control that we can also consider. One of them is a special consult. And when I say special consult, what are you thinking? Special consult is a special consultation to somebody maybe outside of the emergency department. So we have our primary uh, at, um, doctors within the emergency room, and they're gonna be able to take care of the patient, but they may need to consult things like cardiology, or orthopedics, or gastroenterology, or surgery, in order to find out what's going on with this patient and further their care. So that is also considered a resource. And then there's another category that we wanna think about is a simple procedure. And this resource is considered something like a laceration repair. And then our complex procedure. So if you've worked in the ER or you've ever done some shadowing in the ER, you may have heard of something called a conscious sedation. So if there is some sort of sedation needed, maybe to reposition a joint back, you would consider this not only one resource, but actually two. Let's put that in a different color so it sticks out. Because you may need a little bit extra hands on deck for that resource. So these are the things that we break down. So when we think about the patient that comes in, if they come in, they're saying, I need a medication refill. Or if they come in, say, with like a fever, and the only thing we're gonna do is gonna give them Tylenol, they would be an ESI of five. But if it's somebody who comes in and they have abdominal pain, and you're looking at this patient and you're thinking, hmm, this patient is probably gonna need blood work, they're probably gonna need a picture to find out what's going on, and then they probably might need IV fluids because they're vomiting, right in there we already have three, so they're gonna be an acuity of three. And then if they need more because they're unstable, maybe they are tachycardic, and we're thinking they're going down a sepsis route, then they might be a two. So, Let's get into this little grid right here so we can hopefully understand what I'm talking about and how quickly the triage nurse works in the emergency room in order to assign the ESIs. So we have somebody coming in with an ESI, a chief complaint. We're gonna decide if they're stable or unstable, how long can they wait, and how many resources they're gonna need. The first line here, if their chief complaint is a cardiac arrest, if they're pulseless with CPR in progress, or respiratory arrest, do you think this person is stable? Uh, I would think not, because they are unable to do some type of A, B, or C. Because of this, can they wait? No, they need to be seen now, right now, or maybe 10 minutes ago. How many resources are they going to need? Probably all of them, or many is the correct term, right? This person doesn't have a pulse. This person is going to need possibly a tube, so they're going to need respiratory at bedside. They might need anesthesia if we have to go to the OR. They're gonna need blood work, they're gonna need imaging, they're gonna need some lines, they're gonna need some IVs and medication. So this person's gonna need a lot. So I would say, let's hurry up and intervene and we're gonna put them as an ESI of one. Moving on to the next chief complaint. 
patient comes in and they say, I've been having some chest pain, I've been having some shortness of breath. Maybe they, somebody's bringing in their elderly, or elderly family member and they're saying, I'm having trouble swallowing. They have a visible droop. Maybe they're having some type of paralysis on a certain side of the body, only one side. You're gonna think, hmm, this is probably a stroke maybe. Is this person stable? Uh, they could be, or they could be concerning. So they could be stable now but could be quickly unstable. So I always put this patient in like the, uh, I'm not getting a good feeling, like that belly feeling of like, uh -uh, something's not right with this patient. So I'm gonna say they're gonna be a concerning patient. They're stable to possibly unstable, or they are currently unstable and they're gonna get worse pretty quickly. Can they wait? Nah, probably not. So this is somebody you want to back in maybe less than 10 minutes. A lot of places have a policy where they, someone comes in with a chest pain, or if it's palpitations, if they're having fast heart rate, slow heart rate, whatever it is, something to do with the chest and everything cardiac, they should have an EKG in under 10 minutes. So can they possibly wait? Mm, I'm gonna call them, get them back as ASAP because we need to make sure we see this patient quickly. How many resources are they gonna need? They're probably gonna need many as well, right? So based upon this, this person or this presentation of a patient is going to be a two, an acuity of two, right? Does that make sense? Like they, they really can't wait, they aren't really doing that great, and it could get worse pretty quickly. Now we're gonna be talking about abdominal pain. Chief complaint right here for this grouping is abdominal pain. Patient comes in, it's just a general abdominal discomfort. They got nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, they're just not feeling too good, something along those lines. So you're gonna to think to yourself, is this patient stable? More than likely they're stable. Can this person wait? Yes, but no. So we hopefully wanna get them back in the first hour so we can really start the process on them, find out what's going on, get that blood work rolling. If they have abdominal pain, think into what's going on or they got any of that nausea, vomiting. You know, you're gonna think, is there some type of blockage? Do they have some type of inflammation in that area? So we're gonna be thinking we need to see an image, right? We need to probably give them fluids if they have a volume deficit. We're probably gonna give them any type of medication to help with that nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So right there, they're already gonna have about three or more, right? So you wanna think two or more resources. They are going to be an acuity of three, you got it. Moving on to this section here. So now we're moving into somebody who comes in with like a UTI, they're like, ah, it's just been burning when I pee a lot and I'm peeing a lot keep going like every 10, 20 minutes, nothing comes out, it's just a little pssst. Or somebody comes in with maybe some type of orthopedic injury that is not compound, that's not popping through the skin. Somebody who rolled their ankle at basketball practice or somebody slipped on ice walking out to their car and they have a knee injury. Is this person stable? For all intensive purposes, purposes is this person stable? Could they possibly wait for a little bit? Yeah, more than likely this person is very stable. Besides their broken ankle or they're possibly UTI, they were feeling pretty good today. They're not gonna be just coming in. They weren't gonna come in just because they weren't feeling crappy that day, but because something happened, now I'm here. Can they wait? Yeah, they can, they can wait. And this is where it gets you know hairy a little bit in the emergency room because they feel like they should be seen, like, yes, I'm in pain and this is a pretty acute. One minute I was fine, now I'm not feeling so great. But can this person wait? Yes, should we get them back? Yeah, we wanna get them back. We wanna have some compassion for our patient. Will they need a lot of resources? Well, they're probably only gonna need one, right? Probably gonna need an x-ray, because remember, oral medications. If I had someone come in with an ankle injury and I gave them Tylenol and I gave them an x-ray, that's two, but that technically the oral doesn't count, so it's only one. They're getting one, one type of resource from me. So this person is going to be an acuity of a four. And then five, five are the ones that come on in and you're like, you know, you really should have possibly went to your family doctor for this. Maybe even an urgent care you could go to because they're coming in for things like work notes, medication refills. So they're stable. They really don't need any care from us, which should give it away from you. Can they wait? Yeah, they can wait. And how many resources are they gonna need? None. Remember back to our resources. We're probably not doing anything for a patient here that needs a medication refill. We're giving them a piece of paper that is not a medication, that is not 
fall into an IM medication that does not fall into a sub-Q or an IV. They are just going in to be getting a piece of paper from us so we can refill a medication. So if you look at this whole table, you just want to think about the ESI and how that works. The person that is given an ESI of one, everyone in the ER or most of the people in the ER that are working are going to be very much aware of this patient and or other resources within the hospital will be responding as well. Also with two, two is where some resources as well from the hospital are going to be coming over. Cardiology, neurology, they're going to be coming to check out these patients. But from three and on, this is where we may or may not see any intervention from anyone else. So you want to just really think about the patient as a whole and how you're going to prioritize them. And the more practice you have as a triage nurse, the faster and quicker you're going to get and the more experience you're going to get because triage is really the most important workflow of the ER because if you're assigning the wrong ESI to these patients and somebody who we thought might be able to get in and out in under maybe 20 minutes is now somebody who's there for four hours, it might be you know something with a workflow that is causing a commotion and a backup within the ER, which is not what we want. So remember the word triage is to sort and we want to sort our patients on an ESI on a scale of one to five, one being the most severe and unstable, five being the most stable. So I hope that made sense. I hope it cleared up some triage questions for you guys. And as always, until next time. Thank you.